What's going on America? Kevin from Kevin's Corner where I try to make sense out of nonsense and I'm about to switch it up y'all. Today I'm going to show you how someone, if they really worked hard at it, could make some nonsense out of sense. In other words, something that makes perfectly good sense. Somebody who's using their deductive reasoning skills will walk or talk themselves right out of common sense, out of deductive reasoning. Working hard to be ignorant working hard to be naive, working hard to be mm, dumb. So we all heard about uh, Tucker Carlson receiving the video footage from January 6th. And uh, there's some people that are a little concerned. Now I'm thinking to myself, why would you be concerned? What do you have to hide? I mean, heck, the footage should show everything, right? I don't see what the problem is. Only way you would have a problem with this is that you felt that the footage would show something that would undermine your narrative and possibly even implement you in to maybe perhaps coordinating something to make it look as if it was something that it wasn't. Inflating it, it will probably show a whole bunch of folks that might have been involved in this that shouldn't have been involved. There's so many things that could come out of this, uh, but if you had nothing to do with this stuff, you okay with it. You like, show the footage, man. Cause I'm telling you, all the stuff that we showed y'all doing all of those trials and stuff is legit. We didn't alter it, we didn't cut it, we didn't frame it a certain way, but instead, a lot of folks are coming out launching what I would call a preemptive strike. Meaning, let's go ahead, undercut this narrative, try to make it appear that there's going to be some biases, unlike the ones we had when we put our stuff out, um, and that Tucker Carlson might abuse this. So who better to send out than Eric Fartwell? That's right, that guy. He probably, out of many others, including Adam Schiff, Nasty Pelosi, and many more, probably got an invested interest in making sure that this footage don't come out because the footage shouldn't lie, right? Um, So here is From the Hill. Now I know that I am going to briefly touch on Eric Fartwell and this other dude, but really uh, it's the reaction to the two commentators after you listen to these clips from Eric Fartwell and this other guy that I really want to focus on, okay? So with no further ado, let's go ahead and unpack this real quick, starting off with Eric Fartwell on MSNBC, trying to get out ahead of this story. Check it out. Before we get to this video make sure you hit like share my videos subscribe if you haven't subscribed already also make sure that your notifications are on and they're set to all now let's get into this but first quick commercial break well we're seeing uh, week by week that now kevin mccarthy has to pay a new installment on that corrupt bargain right oh. so last week uh, the installment was to give tucker carlson uh, unfettered access to police footage okay. sensitive police footage of the capitol on january 6. you know there's no good ending to that uh, it's it's either going to be used to distort what happened on January 6th uh, by Tucker Carlson, or you just gave the proudest boy of all a blueprint uh, for the Capitol uh, that, you know, perhaps who knows where that will land, you know, for the next insurrection that could be planned. But well, there you go. Now, that sounds like a guy that has nothing to hide, right? That sounds like a guy that really values transparency. That man said no good could come of that. What do you mean no good could come of that? We all want to see how we almost lost our democracy. We all want to see how these folks without no guidance, without Trump being there to lead them in the battle, without no leader, without no guns, none of that stuff. We all wanna see how close all of these folks in the Capitol came to losing their life and how close America came to losing its democracy. So we should be allowed to see all of that footage. And this man is saying, no good could come of that. Well, I guarantee you the good that he's talking about is no transparency could come of that that might show that what we are trying to tell everybody happened didn't happen. It could blow the whole narrative if we find a lot of stuff that people, least on my side, that's been using some common sense are saying, that doesn't make any sense. So uh, it appears that Eric has a lot to hide. So it's uh, like taking a grain of salt from him. You know, we already know he has an invested interest. But then he goes and launches a low blow trying to say that uh, Tucker Carlson would be the proudest boy of all, trying to link him with the Proud Boys in that narrative. And then he also goes on to say to uh, launch the next insurrection. So here we go. Here's the response. And this is what journalist Dana Milbank had to say about oh, another the footage. One. The truth is this doesn't belong in the public domain oh, for anybody. Uh, in uh, Kevin McCarthy's sort of cravenness to uh, uh, cater to the Matt Gaetzes and the Tucker Carlson's, he is risking uh, the security of himself oh. and of his colleagues uh, and of the Capitol uh, itself. Still it's leaning into this safety rationale for uh, for urging this footage to be censored or kept from 
the media. I think if they say Tucker Carlson should not be the only one with access to it, we all, other journalists, we should all be able to see. We don't want him selectively revealing it. I would say, fine, that makes sense to me. But that's not what they're saying. Yeah, it's not what they're saying, see, which concerns me. And it kind of reveals their motive because immediately they're trying to go in on this angle that not only is something suspect with Tucker Carlton's motives, but it's a safety issue. You're putting people's lives in danger. Now, this has been a tactic used by the left constantly. For example, words put people's lives in danger. That's right. When you disagree with people and you actually confront them with reality, truth, facts, data, and stuff like that, it's like violence. It puts their lives in danger. So words are dangerous. And then, of course, they're trying to use this across the board to make sure that any information that comes out and video footage that we might see uh, could be interpreted as putting these folks' lives in danger. Yeah, that's right. Showing all of this stuff on the inside of the Capitol could be putting all of these uh, congressmen and women's lives in danger. So, you know, the old go-to. If you want to silence something, you want to silence a person, always go to the extreme and say they're putting folks lives in danger which is always a concern of mine because in my live show i just showed a video clip where msnbc was talking about how just because tom cotton questioned that lab leak theory that just questioning that was putting folks lives in danger and it could it could lead to folks being killed or harmed or something, only to find out that it was true. So could it be that they're using the same tactic over and over again to keep us from snooping around that footage? So you heard the young man right there. He came out and he said, well, you know what? That doesn't pass the smell test. And here comes the young lady and they both start off OK. But I'm going to show you the very moment where reasoning decides to go right out the window for one of them. Let's check it out. Swalwell referring to Tucker Carlson as the proudest boy of all uh, and implying that once Tucker Carlson has the blueprint to the Capitol that he's Cheap. going to have his own personal mini funny, ins yeah. insurrection is kind of uh, a, a bizarre framing choice. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is a weird thing. Look, it is it is possible and maybe probably true that there is the information on the tapes can be used to piece together congressional evacuation routes, mm -hmm. what their evacuation plans are, where in the building they go, etc. They gotta change up that stuff anyway. That's the thing. <laughs> I, I would expect that one six forced them to reevaluate right. some things. It was a good test run. The mm -hmm. ultimate fire drill. They probably yeah. learned things about what they should change. And you probably also have to. When I hide the Easter eggs from my nephews and they all find them, I don't hide them in the same place <laughs> next year. Exactly. This stage of complaining about it seems really premature and easy to poke holes in. Now, if Tucker Carlson. Uh oh. Now she she was doing fine, y'all. Uh, right then she's like, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't pass the smell test. Why would they be concerned? about, you know, the routes and stuff like that when obviously they would change it up. It's kind of like when they had the whole narrative of the uh, secret codes to the nuclear weapons with Donald Trump as if they don't change up those codes like every half an hour or something. But uh, yeah, she just allowed her common sense to intercept that narrative right there. But this is the moment where somehow common sense decide, well, man, it's my lunch break. I'm going to send in some nonsense. OK, here it comes, y'all. This is how you talk yourself into some nonsense right here. Does a monologue where he says one six was not that big a deal and liberals are complaining and I'm justified you know, people breaking the law in these ways, well then make the case against why what he's saying is wrong and use your own competing footage and, and okay. have that out. Okay. But this feels like a weird thing to be sucking so much media attention yeah. up and time up when there's these ongoing right. crises all across the, the country. The default should be not to shield the American people from information. The detail should be to release, uh, the, the default exactly. should be to release stuff. Because we do have people, uh, members of Congress who were in the Capitol while it was happening, of both parties, who have stories about how it all went down. That's we know point. Members of, we know political figures have in the past exaggerated or mischaracterized uh, how things happened in crisis situations when they've been abroad, that et is cetera. So, true. so now we could theoretically verify some of the things they said that is absolutely within the public interest. Maybe we can't, but we'll see if that's what the footage shows. I think that's totally a legitimate area for journal. That's something that people deserve. And, and that's true. See, what that young man just said makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because we have seen people stage stuff. You know, Hillary Clinton talking about, you know, we were shot at and all that stuff then you got joe biden uh staging some type of crisis over in ukraine where there was you know bomb warnings going off and all of that mess they do it constantly we even have them uh looking at some video footage or at least some pictures down there on that border and they just all embellished and said that it looked like these border patrol men were whipping haitians whipping haitians so they have been known to embellish i mean heck if we didn't see that video footage of paul pelosi opening that door with that left hand standing there with the hammer man right there talking about what's up <laughs> 
Uh, what y'all up to? Nothing. We ain't doing nothing. And then all of a sudden, it was hammer, hammer, I am, hammer. You got me in the mix. All of that stuff, if we wouldn't have seen that video footage, we would have thought that Paul Pelosi was just a victim of a MAGA Republican, right? And like she said in the beginning, when she still had some sense, that yeah, you could slice up some clips and stuff and show a perspective outside of the context. Now, we saw the perspective of the Democrats in the J6 committee, right? It would only behoove us to want to see the rest of that footage. And I'm a little concerned why they wouldn't let us see it. That should be the main question that our common sense should be asking. But now it's about to go completely out the window. Here it comes, y'all. She's about to justify being stupid. Even that's a little bit of a, that framing is a little bit of a problem because it ignores that we have seen a ton of footage. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that things can't be recontextualized, but when you see, I mean, we've all right. watched the, the, the mob breaking the windows. We all I watched, watched it, I was the there. The woman really get bad. shot, it was yeah. horrifying. We all, you know, we all, we all watched the close calls of, if, of how, how proximate throngs of people who had I, I think stated that, intent to cause harm were to Congress members. Yes. So, so to the extent that there's, you know, a fringe case here and there, even framing it as we could find that the whole thing is debunked. I mean, no, we're not going to find that the whole thing is debunked. Why not? Why not? I mean, do you understand the level that she has to be on to start saying to herself, well, look, you know what? I mean, to say that it didn't happen, I mean, you know what? We all saw with our own eyes the, the video footage of them yeah, breaking out windows and then pushing the police around. Now, what should be the common sense question that she should be asking herself about what she saw with her own eyes. Imagine if I was a villain and not the hero and I wanted to deceive people who the extent of their, you know, deductive reasoning stopped right at what their eyes see. They would be easy to fool. All I would have to do is create a scenario that looks a certain way but is not that way. For example, we saw Anderson Pooper standing in some knee deep water down there where he was saying the hurricane was all crazy and stuff. Then when you backed away, you saw that it was all staged, right? We saw a whole bunch of cars lined up during COVID, but come to find out, they went and got employees, told them to get in their cars and start circling around a couple of times to make it look like that we were really busy and stuff like that. So if you are naive enough to just say, well, we all saw it with our own eyes, boy, you are <laughs> right for the pickings. But let's see, maybe she'll stop it. Maybe she'll catch herself and say, wait a minute, I don't want to fall for that because then I'm an easy target. Let's see where she goes with this. Hmm. Unless... You, you know, right. there's a, 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 a AI that I, I saw. Yeah. I saw with my own but eyes. To, to I saw with. people smash windows and push past police, and and go, and it was embarrassing and horrible. Absolutely. But what I suspect they might find in some cases is that there are because the the the, the footage you've seen on CNN and other channels is is this you know really hor genuinely horrible. I'm not I'm not disagreeing is, with that framing. Uh, in mob footage of police being overwhelmed and o overcome. It's a big building. There was a lot of people going in different ways. I bet there is more footage. Than now, this young man's trying to hang on to his sanity and his common sense, but, you know, he's sparring with her a little bit. Now, what, what, what do you think, just right now, before we move on, should be the common sense question that you ask yourself? The question that she should have asked herself is, what I saw, was it really what I saw? Who were those people? We saw people doing stuff, but we don't know who those people were. Now, if I'm a villain and I want to deceive someone like her, see, I'm showing you, I'm giving you a breakdown of how you could talk yourself into some nonsense. See, if I wanted to deceive a person like her, all I would do is just put together a couple people and say, hey, I need you to pretend to do this, okay? I want us to stage this and folks might believe it because they would say, well, heck, it's not a movie. I mean, come on. If I went to the movies, I would know that it was fake. But heck, this happened right before my eyeballs. You do realize that these people that were doing this just might not be who you think they are. Could that be the one missing link, missing puzzle that you did not include in your deductive reasoning. See, because you're relying just on what I saw. So this guy now is trying to give some additional information to see if she would hang on to her common sense, but she's, she's determined to be nonsensical. Than we have previously seen of sure, police of, not right. having any, of, of police calmly telling protesters, oh, this is so-and-so's office. And, sure. and, and it, oh, because I, some people have tried to say, well, we were invited in. Yeah. And again, and Good I, point. I, in many places, they were not invited in. But there might have okay. been other hallways where they're so not I, having I this overrun, and that's going to be embarrassing. I completely agree that's that that's possible. Now, 
Right then, she should have stopped. She should have stopped me because, see, the young man said, hey, man, look, there were people that said they were being invited in. Now, I would stop and st say to myself, well, you know what? If one side of the building had police officers inviting folks in and the other was pretending like they were trying to stop the people, why weren't they all on one accord? If the mission was to stop these people from coming in, then you would think they would all be on the radio letting everybody know, hey, man, look, we're being overran. Don't let nobody in. But for some reason, we saw a lot of officers allowing people to come in then we saw a lot of officers pretending to stop people. And I'm talking pretending, okay? Because it didn't look like they were putting forth a whole bunch of effort. And maybe she did not see the video footage of those officers who were blindsided, who was wondering why they were not stationed at the Capitol earlier. They were told to just do some, you know, traffic patrol, take half the day off. Those officers actually was upset and said, we were set up. They wanted us to fail. And the officers that were there kind of going a little pushing, you know, back and forth and stuff like that with those people. Um, it didn't look like they were trying really hard. No, there's some other things too that maybe she didn't see as a reporter. Um, there were a lot of people right there with those officers that did not look like Trump supporters. For example, Ray Epps and that whole group of young men right there. Or what about all of the people yelling and saying, those people breaking in is not us, that's Antifa. That's Antifa. What about that? I mean, could it be, and I'm just thinking out loud, could it be that the people that they saw doing that were not Trump supporters, but they were people who were brought in to make themselves look like Trump supporters? Hmm. So here she is now, is gonna come and introduce another nonsensical theory to it as well. And embarrassing, embarrassing to who? I, I think embarrassing to CNN. No, no, not CNN. See, now you're becoming nonsensical too, young man. It's not embarrassing to just CNN. It's embarrassing to the Democrat party who came out there and parroted this stuff and trying to make people have uh, dang on memorials every year talking about 9-11 was equal to this and you know World War II and uh, Pearl Harbor and the Civil War all of that was equivalent because we almost lost our democracy those people the people who paid a director to come in and put on this production so they can present this one-sided edited narrative that uh, all of this stuff took place. It would be embarrassing to them, the people who for whatever reason tried to make this seem like it was organic. What if we were to find out that it wasn't organic, but it was planned? Now that would not only be embarrassing to these people, but it would also be very damning to these people to the point where maybe they might end up on some charges. But uh, this lady right here is about to talk herself once again, right out of common sense. But here, but exactly. Like What's from, 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 well? from the from the position of a I'm a Democrat and yeah. the the insurrection was wrong. The what? fact that police were complicit was very complicit. much a democratic narrative in the beginning, at least until they decided to vote to give the Capitol Police more funding. Yeah. Okay. See, now here we go. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. So now here she is saying that the police were complicit in this. That was the Democrat narrative. So we can't win either way. On one end, they're heroes and they're being brought in and celebrated and crying and snotting on TV. But then on the other side, they were complicit because that probably would explain the very gentle pushing back and forth. Them doing this and telling people to go in. Uh, that would explain that. But then the next question would be, why would they be complicit and who would benefit from them being complicit? Would it be Trump supporters or could it be Democrats who want it to look like Trump supporters launched an insurrection and now we can use that to go after Trump and go after all of his supporters? Which one of these groups would benefit from this? But uh, if we listen to this lady here, she's saying these are the people who would have benefited from it. But like to me, all of that just confirms the, the narrative that there are... There right. is a conservative influence in the police force. Right. There's a Blue Lives Matter oh. influence that there was. They were in cahoots, which is why they were able to break down the barricades and get in. They weren't even break down the barricades. They were invited in as the argument. So many black people have made the argument about if this were a Black Lives Matter protest, it never would have gotten to this point because they would not have had that same flexibility from the police force. They would have been met as much, with much more hostility. I mean, that is all part of the kind of left-leaning narrative from yeah. the beginning. So again, I think that all of that. Th those kind of shades and contours might come out. Now see, this is what I mean by talking yourself out of common sense right into nonsense. So now here what she's trying to say, she's trying to say that these folks that breached the Capitol because they support the blue, Somehow, these police officers were like, well, don't worry about it, man. Hey, guys, you're Trump supporters. We want you guys to go in and breach the Capitol, get Nancy, and change this all around because you support us, right? That's what she wants us to believe. And then she also wants us to believe that because they were white folks, they were not resisted, they were not dealt with accordingly. Um, Could it be that 
They didn't deal with them accordingly because they wanted it to appear that they gave the minimum amount of resistance, but they were overwhelmed. And then these folks just went right past them and breached the Capitol and went in. And now they are domestic terrorists. And now the FBI is going after all these Trump supporters. And they're saying that MAGA folks are, you know, extremists. And because that sounds like it benefits the Democrats more than it would the Republicans. Because what did these officers think that these people were going to be able to accomplish if they let them go? That's my question. If they were on their side, what would what would be the accomplishment? Did they give them some codes? Did they tell them, hey, go down in the basement and do this? What would be the end game for these cops allowing these Trump supporters to go in? Did they think they were going to really accomplish their goal and objective? And then she brings in the race angle. Of course, you know, if these were black folks, they would have been dealt with differently. Maybe she didn't see the Black Lives Matter riots and them burning down stuff for a whole summer as they danced on top of police cars and as cops sat back there and let it happen because Democrat mayors and governors said, leave them be now, leave them be. See, maybe she didn't see that. Maybe she didn't see that one black dude that was mixed right into the crowd of those Trump supporters that apparently was not beaten by the cops. We all know him. Um, Solomon, uh, you know, that kid that went in and recorded and said, we took this thing. Yeah, we're doing stuff. That guy, the guy who said that I put on a fake Trump hat, all of that stuff. Could it be that these guys went in as plants? Hmm? Could it be that? Could it be that those cops um, that pretended to give some type of resistance was not trying to help those guys out, but was trying to help the Democrat narrative out? Could it be that? I'm just thinking out loud. Because see, the first thought that common sense should have would be, well now, if you really wanted to stop this, you would have accepted all of the additional help that Donald Trump offered in regards to the National Guard. They would have definitely given resistance to Antifa and Black Lives, I mean, I'm sorry, to those uh, MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters with cell phones and MAGA hats about to launch that insurrection. They would have definitely made sure that that didn't happen. But just mysteriously, the day before, the mayor and Nasty Pelosi rejected that and then gave half the, the police force the day off, sent them out there to do some traffic. And this woman right here can't put that together. She's working hard to be dumb. She's working hard to embrace nonsense versus embracing some common sense. This is how you talk yourself right out of common sense. But it's not embarrassing to Congress members, uh, Democratic no, Congress not. members, in the, or any Congress members in the least. Mm -mm. It's not embarrassing. It's dangerous. Because if we find out that this was all coordinated and it was a false flag and those folks were not dang on Trump supporters, then we would be looking at perhaps some charges. See, if we get to the nitty gritty and find out that these police officers all knew where they were supposed to be, where they weren't supposed to be, what they were supposed to allow them to do and what they weren't, all of that. If we find that out, it could lead to people like Eric Swalwell and the rest of them being brought into Congress and have to testify why they got out there and supported this mess and why they allowed this mess to happen by lowering the dang on police presence and just for some reason said it would probably be better if we have less police. Could it be that that's really what they're worried about? They're not worried about being embarrassed. They're worried about being exposed. Just like I had to expose this woman surrendering all of her common sense and exchanging it for nonsense. Now, God bless you. God bless America. Don't forget, hit that like button. Follow me on other platforms. Don't forget also to subscribe to my backup channel. Donate to my channel if you can. Links are below my cash app, my PayPal, and all that good stuff. And follow me on Rumble in the Jungle. When you subscribe, make sure that you hit that dang on notification button and make sure it's set to all. Now, God bless y'all. God bless America. See y'all next time in Kevin's Corner. Take care.